Bank has predicted the global demand for materials required for low carbon technologies will increase rapidly. Lithium, for example, as much as a thousand percent by 2050. If we can't find those reserves, though, we'll need increased production to extract them. To talk more about this, we're joined now by John Mavrogenis, Professor of Economic Geology at the Australian National University. Professor, thank you so much for joining us today. Now, demand, of course, is increasing massively for critical minerals, but we still need to mine traditional metals and minerals as well. Tell us about the role the mining sector is going to play in the technology and the green revolutions. Yes, well, as you know, Australia is a major provider of many conventional materials like copper and, and one of the biggest exporters of iron ore and coal on earth. We also produce a lot of gold. So we're a very capable mining nation and we're going to have to set our sights on some other things to mine, like for instance, rare earths, and you mentioned lithium. And one of the advantages there is that as we get out of the coal business, we can mine lithium and rare earths instead, so that it's not a net loss of jobs. We could just continue mining, just mine different things. So I think it's, a, it's gonna play a big role globally. You've said before, Professor, that there are tough decisions that need to be made when it comes to mining, of course. You know, we need to decide how valuable a place is. Is there not a way in this age where we're innovating so quickly that we can de-risk the mining process to a much greater extent than we are at the moment? Yes, I think we can. I mean, you know, we've been to the moon, so we can mm -hmm. do almost anything if we set our minds to it. Mm. However, you know, there are inherent risks in mining, especially if you're mining in an area with significant rainfall and groundwater. If there's a lot of water around and you're trying to keep that water clean, it's not always technically possible to keep it clean. So um, one of the advantages we have is that we're a huge continent and much of the continent is, is desert. So that if we dig a big hole in the ground in the middle of the Yilgarn, and there's very little rainfall, there's very little risk to anything there. Um, there are risks involved with smelting and downstream, but for the most part, we're pretty safe here in that there aren't that many places that we would put at risk. But to answer your question specifically, yes, of course we can mine safely and cleanly, but that takes a lot of oversight. In other words, it's not always simple, especially when there's a lot of water around. Mm. When it comes to mining those type of minerals, the critical minerals, safely, the way that we need to do it so that we can mine in places that might have uh, significant rainfall, as you've just been talking about, what sort of regulations are needed that we don't yet have? Well, you know, we do have, we do have a pretty good system of regulation. I think we just have to be careful to abide by it. Um, one of the advantages of the bigger companies is they have shareholders that will hold them to be responsible with the smaller juniors and some of the companies that don't have a big global footprint, they, they can take, take more chances. But I think it, it takes strong government and good leadership to say that we must do this cleanly or not do it at all. So we've talked about like in the Tarkine forest, do we really want to mine tungsten there? And probably the answer is that the native forest might be worth more than the tungsten. And so we should probably leave it. But much of Australia, it's not a problem. Now, lithium, is an interesting one because, because mining what we call pegmatites, the granitic pegmatites where the lithium is held, is a pretty clean situation in that there aren't a lot of sulfide minerals to make sulfuric acid. So it's not generally a chemically dangerous business. In other words, there aren't a lot of threats. So I think that we could certainly in the Northern Territory and in WA, we could probably mine a lot of the pegmatites uh, cleanly without, without changing regulations uh, terribly much. Uh, so, so when it comes to technology and the role technology plays, you know, you, you mentioned certain areas where it may be better not to mine in those particular areas. But mm -hmm. if we come to the point where demand increases to the level where we need those minerals and we're not sourcing them elsewhere, perhaps from other countries or, or other areas, what sort of technology should we expect to see which will allow this to happen? I mean, how close are we to that point? Well, you know, it's fascinating that I, I was just reading about a, a lithium mine in Spain and they couldn't get permits to make an open pit there. So what they did was they drove underground shafts in and then they process all the ore within a building that's using green hydrogen for power 
so that it doesn't look terribly bad. There, there's no mass, it's all contained, and there's really no greenhouse gases produced so that if we want to get technological and you know use electricity that's that's from solar and other forms we could we could technically mine incredibly cleanly have you seen any really exciting technology um lately you know new technology new innovation you know within the mining sector when it comes to um you know bringing us closer to that net zero level um, that's going to help us in the future. Is there anything that you've seen recently that, that's really exciting to you? Yeah, there are many places that are starting to use electricity. So they can, rather than use the big diesel powers, many of them are putting solar power in. So slowly but surely, I think we're starting to get there. We can start to use, you know, we can use computer-driven tractors. We can mine underground without people having to be there. We can pretty much just use electricity very soon. We're not there yet. We still are very reliant on diesel, but that's a switch that we're just going to have to make. And the, the ability is there. 